think now you should be able to uh, hear me and see my screen. Yes, okay. Uh, so, yeah, what I was explaining is um, the overall syllabus, like how it is distributed um, in static part and dynamic part. Static part is more or um, more of the free body diagrams and uh, friction application of uh, equations of equilibrium and trusses. Okay, whereas the dynamic part is like studying more of more the theorems like DLM but principle, work energy principle, impulse momentum principle, and problems related to it. Okay, so that is overall your syllabus. So let's uh, try to understand some basic things so that um, we'll be able to study all these topics in detail in upcoming sessions. Okay. Mm. So first of all, um, you should know uh, that uh, the mechanics is what is meant by mechanics and uh, how mechanics is uh, divided into two major categories. OK, yes, yes, one, any doubt? OK, um, so. What is applied mechanics or you can call it engineering mechanics as well. It is branch of engineering which deals with the effect of external forces applied on a body in any state, whether in any state means like whether it is in rest or So just a minute, um, I, I have connected. Again, I'll connect through my mobile as well. Okay, just give me a minute.
uh, I think it should work fine now. That's so. Um, yeah, so mechanics is, as I said, um, branch of science uh, or engineering, which deals with the effect of external forces applied on the body. And uh, those forces are applied when body is either in uh, motion or at static. Okay. Let's hope now. Hello, can you hear me now? Yes, okay. So, uh, what I was explaining is um, static means body either in, in um, uh, body is in rest and in dynamics, body is in motion. Okay. And uh, mechanics is dealing with both, both the approaches. So in static part, body is in equilibrium. It is not moving. So we can apply equations of equilibrium directly there and uh, understand the effect of external forces. OK, whereas in dynamics part, OK, on the right hand side, you can clearly see here. Let me use a laser pointer. We have uh, a dynamics part here uh, body will be in motion so you cannot apply equations of equilibrium there so our focus will be like divided into two parts one is kinematics and kinetics kinetics is branch of dynamics that deals with the effect of um, um, the external forces on the body we, you can say um, Without considering the forces, basically, we have to understand the effect like uh, on the body. We will focus only on displacement, velocity and acceleration part. Whereas in kinetics, we'll understand the effect on the body considering the external forces which are causing that motion. OK, so that is a difference or this is the difference in between these two branches, kin uh, kinematics and kinetics. Kinematics means without considering the forces. Kinetics means considering the forces. So in kinematics part, we'll focus on displacement, velocity, acceleration. So relationship between them, you know, constant velocity problems and uh, variable velocity uh, problems. So our focus will be mainly on that. OK, um, uh, rectilinear motion, uh, circular motion, all these part we'll study in this. And whereas in kinetics part, as we are focused on the forces, uh, our approach will be to understand the different theorems first, like which are related to the forces such as work energy principle, impulse momentum principle, D'Alembert's principle, and understanding the problems on this topic. Okay, so this is the overall uh, distribution of the syllabus and uh, the subject. Okay, any doubt till this? If you have any doubt, feel free to ask in either in chat box or um, um, you can ask me directly. Uh, not sure uh, today my um, network is little bad. Um, screen share is getting ended again and again. Please excuse me for it. Um, We got one question here. Uh, let's try to answer it. Um, in kinematics, the net forces can be uh, considered zero. So 
yeah, I means um, here our focus is not on the forces. Okay, um, in kinematics we'll focus on like uh, on the properties such as like velocity, acceleration, displacement. So uh, we'll not talk about the um, yeah. We'll talk only about the motions there, like not the forces work done by the force or let's say uh, impulse created by force all these things will not study there here we'll talk about the uh, velocity so for example if i throw a stone at some initial velocity at particular angle uh, what will be the uh, velocity after a certain time uh, what will be the maximum height it will go how much long it will go so all these kind of things um, all these things uh, we will be studying in the kinematics part. Is it clear, uh, Pranjul? Yeah. Uh, and yeah, we do uh, consider the forces um, in kinetics part. Okay. Yeah. Correct, Abhishek. Only the effect of forces will be considered in the kinetics. And in kinematics, we will not consider the forces. Um, we'll just study the motion there. Okay. So let's um, try to understand the things in little more detail. Uh, in mechanics, you will not study anything such as uh, stresses, strains, deformation, um, def deflection, bend, or anything such as such, because the assumption here is body is rigid rigid body means what rigid body means that body where if you take any two points within the body even after application of the forces the distance between these two points will not change okay so then we call it as a rigid body or in other words it's a non-deformable body okay and uh, that is our assumption throughout this subject so that's why it's like very comparatively simpler than the other subjects like for example uh, in uh, strength of materials uh, you will study stresses and strains there and uh, why because their body is deformable and is our is the practical lab, let's say assumption and uh, there you will see strain is getting generated and uh, because of it stress will happen okay but here here we are not talking about deformation or um, um, uh, deflection or any as such our body is uh, rigid so if, uh, it will not deform and uh, so what we'll study here is like uh, the effect of it like um, maybe let's say body is at rest uh, and how much amount of force we need in order to move the body or body is moving how much amount of force we have to apply in order to stop the body or let's say if a system is there in that if you are applying certain force how much moment that force is creating and all these things okay so our focus is mainly on the forces and moments okay forces and moments clear so um, this is our focus force and moment in uh, if you study let's say other difficult subjects or um, uh, the subjects which are based on this such as strength of materials uh, machine design or vibrations and all um, you will you will calculate stresses, strains, and um, that comes from this. Okay, um, so if you know the force first, how the force, um, uh, let's say, calculate the resultant force and all basic things, then only you will be able to calculate uh, how much stress and strain will be developed. Okay, so most for most of your subjects, uh, this mechanics is very important. Uh, it will be uh, basic. Um, subject for rest of your core topics okay so keep that in mind and uh, while studying all this
yeah another um another point is um let's say some laws we'll study now okay some basic laws in order to study this subject such as um, newton's laws okay and uh, we also study um couple of uh, laws which are related to the force system so let us take an example here we have an example of a body and uh, we applied a force p at point a okay and uh, the red line indicates here line of action okay uh, line of action is the line which is along the force direction i hope you are getting it so now what is this law of transmissibility of force this law states that if uh, state if body is there rigid body is there the state of the body will remains unaltered or unaffected if the force acting on the body is replaced by an another force having same magnitude and direction but acting anywhere on the body along the same line of action okay so for so if i replace this force p at point a with the force p at point b okay and the point b is on the line of action okay and the force p is same you can clearly see its magnitude is same and direction is also same so we can say that uh, the state of body will will not al uh, alter okay or will remain same because um, uh, we are applying the force along the line of action okay are you following it so why it is important in some cases let's say um, you can simplify the problem if you uh, use this law of transmissibility of force okay when you draw the free body diagram it will be easy for you to um let's say apply these forces and make the figure simpler in order to understand overall force system i hope it is clear i'll repeat the statement the state of the body or state of the rigid body will remain unaffected if the force acting on the body is replaced by an another force having same magnitude and direction okay but acting anywhere on the body along the same line of action okay so this is the main um, idea for this uh, law now one more thing here uh, we should know is what is the limitation of this law the this law is applicable for the external forces okay okay we got um, yes pranjal uh, in this case body will remain unaffected means for example um, let's say because of this force body is moving in left direction uh, if i apply same force let's say at point b body will also move in the left direction okay or for example or let's say body is at rest and uh, we have some friction and we are applying this 10 newton force here and it is not overcoming the friction so frictional force let's say in this case is again 10 and uh, um, so these two system so i'll replace that 10 newton force from point a to point b the body state will be remains unchanged okay so that is what i am saying uh, we are not talking about strain and all uh, because uh, here the basic assumption is body is um, rigid okay we will just talk about whether it is moving or at rest if it is moving how far it will go um, okay how much work done will do and uh, if it is at rest whether it will move with that external force or whether it will remains at rest how much frictional force it will generate and all all these things will study okay not about the strain senses so um 
I hope you understood the law of transmissibility of force. And now, what is the limitation of this um, limitation of this law? That is what we have to understand. Limitation is it is applicable for the external forces. Okay, not for the internal forces or um, uh, internal stresses developed within body. Okay, so let's take an example here. I have one uh, good example. Sure. Give me a minute. Uh, Yeah, so we have a, a body, let's say uh, in this form and uh, at point A and point B, we have a compressive uh, loading. Okay, so maybe um, what we are doing is uh, we are reducing the temperature or uh, let's say because of some uh, internal contraction body is getting contracted and uh, we have compressive loading here okay but according to this um, law of transmittability uh, what we can do is we can transfer this force p from point a to sorry transfer this force q from point a to point b and similarly we transfer this similarly we can transfer this force p from b to a okay and how how it will look like if you do that, so if you do that, um, Q will be here and P will be here, right? And uh, both are satisfying the condition of, um, let's say, um, law of transmittivity of force because uh, we, have, we have kept the same magnitude, same direction and same line of action. But here the effect is completely different. You can see here in first figure, they are producing compressive force. But in second figure, what is happening is now they are producing a tensile force, right? Uh, so transmittivity affects the internal forces and hence you should not use it for the um, internal forces. I hope you are um, getting what I'm trying to uh, tell you here. Okay, so this is what happens. Okay, the entirely the effect will change if you apply the law of transmittivity of force to the internal forces. Yes, you can ask the question. Darshan. Yeah, you can ask, you can unmute and ask or you can type if you have any question. Okay, uh, feel free. But if it, any external forces are there, then you can do it. But if uh, internal force is there, then uh, you cannot. Okay, because of this reason. Uh, yes, Darshan, you have raised your hand. If you have any doubt, feel free to ask. Yeah, I lowered your hand. Uh, if you have any doubt, ask directly. Any doubt till this? Is it clear to you all? The yeah, okay. Okay, uh, Abhishek, uh, just to, uh, let's say, um, uh, so what you can say, uh, just to, Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm. I'm not saying that uh, for uh, non-rigid and deformable bodies also we have to apply. Okay. First of all, yeah, you are you are right that transmittivity law is not applicable for the non-rigid or deformable bodies. Okay. That is another. That is completely different point. We. Uh, I'm not um, saying that. Um, let's say. Uh, uh, in case of uh, non-rigid. 
in case of non rigid basically we cannot apply that is clear fine but let's say um uh let me try to explain uh through some different things so that you will understand um I i'm talking about the internal forces okay um not um not just the external forces let me um, let me try to uh, draw one more uh, diagram here just give me a minute uh, my screen share got ended I'm sharing my screen. Yes. Okay. Um, so what? Suppose the same example I'll take now, and uh, let's put it this way. You now, maybe like this. This is uh, your um, line of action, and now at this point, apply both the forces, P and uh, okay so let's maybe consider this figure number a figure number b and figure number c so what i am trying to explain is principle of transmittivity of force is not applicable in finding the internal forces okay for example in 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 case of um, figure number a p and q are tensile okay so if you consider this b maybe in this beam ab um forces p and q produces tensile force while in in figure b uh, let's say they are producing compressive forcing or compressive force and uh, then if you um, let's say consider the figure number c there is no internal force okay suppose um if the magnitude is same in that case you'll say there is no um any uh, internal force here okay so that is uh let's say uh, we cannot um, capture here uh, whenever we talk about the internal forces okay external you can do okay whenever you are uh, finding the internal forces in that case only you cannot apply this okay because you cannot say whether the forces are tensile or compressive or no internal force that conclusion you cannot make but if external forces are there then you can make some conclusions because you can easily uh, move the force from one point to other point on the line of action yes Yeah, is it clear? Yes, if it is producing, right? Yeah, internal forces are produced. Like you can, they are not uh, applied. External forces are applied. Yes, I'll work on my uh, network tomorrow. Uh, yes, uh, don't know why it is happening today. Uh, let's um, continue to the next point. So we have studied the first law, law of um, transmissivity of force. Now we'll understand the law of parallelogram of forces. Okay. Um, so um, let's try to write the statement first. The law states that if two forces are acting simultaneously at point O, if two forces are acting simultaneously at point o on a body and are represented in magnitude and direction by two adjacent sides of parallelogram okay so 
so for example if um, uh, this force p and force q we have which are applied on point o we can clearly see this is like uh, two adjacent these are the two adjacent sides of the parallelogram then what law of parallelogram of forces says that the magn the resultant is represented by the diagonal here okay i'll repeat the statement if two forces acting simultaneously at point o on the body are represented in magnitude and direction by two adjacent sides of parallelogram then the resultant r is represented in magnitude and direction by the diagonal of parallelogram okay and how you will calculate this diagonal r r is calculated by under root of p plus q square plus 2 pq cos of theta okay under root of p square plus q square plus 2 pq cos of theta write down uh, the formula yeah we got one question here um, where is law of transmittivity of force is uh, used okay so um connect like whenever you are solving the uh, any problem let's say static problem for example and uh, in that case you are drawing a free body diagram okay and uh, then it, it will be very easy for you to um, let's say draw the free body diagram and put the forces um, properly in order to avoid the confusion okay let me just um, maybe um, give an example here i'll go to the previous slide yeah so yes suppose this is the uh, block b um, and the, or let's say block of weight w okay let's call this um, block which is of weight w and if you are drawing the free body diagram then what will happen the weight will act downward right so either you can write w here or you can also draw here okay it's your choice wherever you want to draw and for this is a simple case but if any complex problem comes then this uh, law of transmittivity helps you to make your um, figure simpler or make your free body diagram simpler and uh, you can easily uh, calculate the total force in that direction okay so in this case either you can write uh, weight here or you can also write here or and let's similarly the reaction which is created by the surface you can draw here or normal reaction or you can also draw here okay so whichever you want okay yes yes someone is for calculation yeah that is what um, i was trying to explain so you can easily uh, draw the figures free body diagrams that is what you can say okay any any doubt in law of parallelogram as well i hope it is clear um here the angle between two forces is theta yeah so what is the resultant here anyone resultant is what resultant force is like if the number of forces acting on the body are replaced by a single force which has the same effect as that of these total forces then that single force is called as resultant okay um so for example um if uh, let's look into this figure if you have a body uh, in this body or on this body you are applying some forces some are uh, in this direction this direction random forces at any direction or any magnitude and because of this external forces something will happen to body okay 
um, some effect will happen to body it means whether body will move in some particular direction some things like that same effect is created by a single force okay then that force is called as a resultant okay in, in simple words so uh, definition will be if system of forces acting on a body if it is replaced by a single force which has the same effect as these total forces then such single force is called as a resultant okay so here we have two forces p and q and then this r is so p is trying to pull this in this direction q is also trying to pull this in this direction so if you replace p and q with a single r same effect you will see okay I hope it is clear. Then we have law of triangle of forces and uh, law of uh, polygon of force. Okay. Hello. Yeah. Um, just a minute. I'll um, law of triangle of forces and law of polygon of forces. Yeah, um, share my screen. Yeah. Law of triangular forces, okay. Um, so law of triangular forces state that um, if two forces P and Q If two forces P and Q, um, let's say are represented in magnitude and direction by two sides of triangle. Okay, P is here. Okay, and then Q is here. They are um, they are basically acting on a body at particular point O. But if you are representing them in the magnitude and direction by two sides of triangle, then the resultant will be the closing side okay the closing side will be the resultant but in opposite direction or opposite order you can see okay so here p, p is in this direction q is in this direction and this is the closing side right but resultant will be yeah closing side but it will be in just opposite order okay so that is what you should know yeah so you can correlate here if let's say this q i am drawing here rather than that if you draw it here what will happen is the resultant you know of course should come here right in this direction so same here you are getting but you are just putting this q not here but at this tip to make um, two adjacent sides of triangle taken in order then the resultant will be in the um, closing side just in the opposite order okay and same law you can uh, use for the polygon okay so statement is same that uh, let's say if the number of forces so here f1 f2 f3 f4 are represented in magnitude and direction by the sides of polygon so f1 is in this direction f2 is in this direction f3 is in this direction f4 will be in this direction as shown in this figure first figure so then resultant will be the closing side but taken in the opposite order okay the resultant will be the closing side taken in the opposite order okay so yeah i hope it is clear law of triangle of forces and law of polygon of forces any doubt in this Okay. Okay, uh, Rishab. Uh, Rishab is asking why we are um, taking result in opposite direction. 
Rishabh, can you tell where the resultant will come for these two? Will it come in this direction or in this direction? Uh, let me, uh, yeah. Whether it will come like this? No, it will not come, Rishab. Your direction, how direction will come like this? So, if I have a body, right? And uh, if I apply force like this, if I pull in both these, these two directions, how it is equivalent to pushing, right? Yeah, it, it will... It will obviously come outwards, right? So now, imagine that you are removing this Q from here and drawing here. This Q you are removing from this side and putting here, like a parallelogram. So now, where should you expect the resultant? It should remain same, right? Are you following, Rishab? Uh, yeah, so that is the assumption here. Okay, I'll repeat this point if you have not listened. Um, um, if these two forces P and Q are, let's say, um, acting on some point O, okay, but they are represented in magnitude and directions uh, by two sides of triangle, which are taken in order. Then the closing side will be the resultant, but in opposite direct, opposite order. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, screen is not visible. Uh, let me share it again. Yes. I hope uh, it is clear till this, uh, at least the law of triangle of forces. So same logic is applicable or uh, extended to the polygon of forces. Okay, nothing, that, nothing different. Same logic um, you are applying for the law of polygon of forces, okay? So here we have, let's say, four system of forces, F1, F2, F3, and F4, okay? They are applied or acting on a body at point O, for example, but you are representing it in the magnitude and direction by the sides of polygon. So this is a kind of polygon, right? So F1 is one side, F2 is another side, F3 is another side, and F4 is another side. So these are the four sides of the polygon. Then the closing side of the polygon will be the resultant, but taken in the opposite order. Okay. Are you following? Um, who was asking it? Um, Damesh, is it clear? Pranjul and Damesh. Okay, uh, yeah, feel free to ask if you have any doubt. So he, here, let's say, if you understand the law of triangle, same thing is, Hello. Not sure what is happening. Um, yeah, we'll wait. What we'll do is let's continue for some some time, and if if it's still breaking in between, then uh, for 
today we'll close it little early okay Next point is resolution of forces. Write down heading resolution of forces. So suppose if you have force F which is acting on a body at point O, you can resolve that force into two components. Okay, resolving means splitting the forces or subdividing the force into two components without changing the effect on the body. Okay, so whatever effect is created on the body because of this external force f which is at acting at angle theta with respect to horizontal at point o same effect will will be there if you replace this f with the two components of it that is fx and fy okay fx is a horizontal component fy is a vertical component you are just splitting this force into the two components okay so fx will be f cos theta and f i will be f sin theta okay you know um, just by using trigonometric um, we are um, writing f x and f y yes okay uh, the one more point you should know is how you should consider the uh, Let's say uh, uh, sign convention here. Okay, so sign convention like if force is in the right rightward direction, you consider it as a positive. If force is in left direction, you consider it as a negative. Same applicable. If force is in upward direction, you should consider it as a positive. If it is lower the in downward direction, you consider it as a negative. So whatever sign conventions we have for the coordinate system that is uh, positive neg negative uh, positive x negative x positive y negative y same sign conventions are uh, should be used for the um, resolution uh, for these forces basically okay so um, if you are uh, if you are resolving the force um, let's say maybe let me just uh, yeah so for example this is the force you are resolving so this is f1 let's say it will f1 cos theta and this is f1 sin theta theta is here then this f1 cos theta will be the negative okay so whenever you are uh, dealing with such um, uh, multiple forces if you are considering a force which is then if you are considering this as a positive you should consider this as a negative okay the one which is let's say going in the rightward direction if you are considering it as a positive the force which is acting in the leftward direction you should consider it as a negative okay same logic you have to apply for the forces in the upward and downward direction okay so that is also one basic thing you should know moment of a force okay so when the moment will generate whenever we are applying a force at certain distance okay so here let's take an example mm. we have one certain force okay applied at certain distance from the let's say this fixed point or hinge point so because of this uh, what will happen this force will create some moment and the value of moment will be the force into displacement moment is what moment is nothing but a turning effect or rotational effect created by a force if it is applied at a certain distance okay um, so here what what you can see is this this is rotating in clockwise direction right what force here it may create a counterclockwise moment okay it may create a counterclockwise moment so if you are considering one moment as a positive then other moment has to be considered as a negative okay 
so if you are considering clockwise as positive then you should consider counterclockwise as a negative while performing your calculations i hope it is clear till this the next point is couple couple is more or less same thing as that of moment okay so whenever two equal forces two equal and opposite forces separated by certain distance d it creates a moment okay or it creates a couple you can say so the value of couple here again the same f into d f is the force and d is the distance between these two forces okay so you can clearly see this is creating a clockwise um, effect right let me draw here yes right you can just by the arrows of these forces you can imagine how um, how the turning effect will be created here it is clockwise right so uh, couple is right say equivalent to a moment f into d so you can say that the two forces of magnitude f but in opposite direction and separated by distance d creating this couple is it clear till this any doubt So here you should just understand how the sign conventions um, uh, you have to use. If one thing you are considering as positive, other should be negative. So yeah, we got one question here uh, for the law of triangle of forces and law of polygon. These laws are applicable for the forces acting at a point on a body. Okay, remember, um, not on the different points. Okay, if if it is on the different points, it will create the moments and uh, things will be a little complex there. Okay, I will uh, explain you once we study the um, let's say force system that is coplanar, non-coplanar, collinear, non-collinear, and all. Then. here um, we got two questions okay f d is work done no ranjan uh, uh, there is a difference okay um, let's say this is f and this is d in this case it work done right is is it correct ranjan what I am saying is Yeah, uh, what I was explaining here is um, you should not confuse, get confused with the force into displacement. Um, force into displacement is work done. That is different altogether topic. And uh, here what I'm trying to uh, say is how much amount of force you're applying and what is the distance between these two forces, okay? So D here in couple is the distance between these two forces. I hope 
uh, it is uh, clear to you uh, ranjan we got one more doubt um, what is the difference between couple and uh, moment yeah you can say they are same okay um, shubham um, because if you do uh, let's say the complete effect of it summation of all vertical forces will be zero because both of them have same magnitude so it will not create any let's say force in the upward direction or vertical direction it only creates the uh, couple okay or a turning effect out of it yeah yeah we got one more question what is torque let let me just explain you through one simple figure here okay so we got one the rod here for example um or maybe uh, simple yeah let's take a horizontal figure uh, it'll be easier for you to understand okay so this is x direction this is y direction and this is z direction so if i am revolving this rod about z direction so what will have what will happen it is it is like a moment okay moment about z direction if i am revolving this rod about y direction you can call it as um, again moment so that will be moment about y but if you re if you are rotating it or if you are making a turning effect out of let's say about z direction in that case it will be the torque okay so if you are turning the body about its axis then you call it as a torque otherwise it will be moment is it clear ranjan okay we got one more question here abhinav how can there be a resultant moment out of a couple if couple can serve two balance opposite direction forces yeah because abhinav they are separated by a certain distance d if two forces are let's say one here and one here there is no um moment but if you start increasing the distance between them you can clearly see a moment let's take a simple example okay take a pen in your hand and try to push the pen from both the sides at a single point you will not see pen pen is turning but now if you put take a pen and put it on a table and try to apply force like this you will see pen will rotate right it will turn abino are you following so you put a pen like this and try to push it here and here then you will see it will rotate yeah aman uh, yes i'll repeat once again so torque you can say if you are uh, turning a body about its own axis it will create a torque right and but if you are turning about certain some other axis then it creates a moment okay we call it as a moment torque is general term is moment torque is a moment about the axis okay i hope it is clear now yeah so this is all about the moment yeah a uh, couple of uh, basic things like uh, some more basic things we'll study before we end session today we'll end session early as i'm facing the network issue um, just give me few more minutes and uh, we'll study a couple of uh, basic things which are um, remain first law second law and third law newton's first law so what is newton's first law states um, that you should know that uh, if body is there it will 
continue to be in the state of rest or uniform motion unless and until you apply an external force acting on it okay um, that is what the first loss is okay so whenever you have a body which is at either rest or in the uniform motion it will it will remain same it will continue to be in rest or uniform motion unless and until you apply some external force to change it second law state says that a rate of change of momentum of a body is directly proportional to the the impressed force you can say or in general you call it as f is equal to ma okay um, mass times the acceleration and uh, third law is uh, newton's third law is for every action we have equal and opposite reaction um, uh, just for an example if you are putting a block of weight w on a surface then the surface also will give an equal reaction force on a block so if you draw a free body diagram of a block how it will look like is this r will act as upward and weight will act acting will weight will be acting downward or in other way you can write it like this okay so this r is a reaction from the surface okay so these three basic laws we have studied from uh, 10th you should also know them just as just to revise it i have explained and uh, yeah the last part which i'm going to explain today is force system coplanar and non coplanar there are two kind of force systems which we have to uh, understand first coplanar is if the forces are within the plane okay within a single plane then you call it as a coplanar force system okay means if i am drawing any forces on this two dimension paper or two dimension uh, uh, yeah figure then you call it as um, a coplanar force system but if some forces are coming out of the plane then in that case you call it as a non coplanar force system okay what is concurrent force system if the forces are passing through single point then you call it as a concurrent force system okay and if forces are not passing through single point for example let's say this is the beam in this beam one force is acting downward one force here acting upward they are separated by certain distance they are not passing through single point right so here this is a, a non -co concurrent force system so this situation can come in coplanar as well as non coplanar force system so that's why a broader classification is looks like this that coplanar concurrent force system you will have or you will have a coplanar non concurrent force system non coplanar concurrent force system or non coplanar non concurrent force system okay so this is how you can you will have the different kind of force systems in our syllabus we only have the coplanar force system because uh, we are dealing with the figures which we can draw in two dimension okay coplanar means if within all forces are in the single plane in xy plane basically okay and uh, either they can be concurrent or non concurrent concurrent means passing through single point non concurrent means they are not passing through single point is it clear till this yes any doubt feel free to ask so if i say a coplanar concurrent force system this is how it will look like whether any moment will get created here no because all the forces are passing through single point so whenever this kind of force system is there we'll talk only about the forces okay we'll deal only about the forces we'll not deal with any kind of moments in first situation that is coplanar concurrent force system but in case of coplanar non concurrent force system we will study not only the forces but also the moments okay because let's take an example here this force f1 which is at a distance d1 creates a clockwise moment this force f2 at a distance d2 creates a counterclockwise moment right 
so basically whenever forces are not passing through single point what it will create it it will create a moments as well so here we will deal with forces as well as moments here so depending on this whether you have a coplanar concurrent force system or non coplanar -co sorry or coplanar non concurrent force system you have to understand which equations of equilibrium you have to apply and solve the problem because in coplanar concurrent force system there is there are no forces sorry there are no moments so you can just use the you can just use these two equations of equilibrium okay before that just to let you know what is equilibrium when we say body is in equilibrium if net force on the body in all the direction is zero right in x direction if summation of all the forces in x direction is zero summation of all the forces in the y direction is zero summation of all moments is zero then basically body is at rest sorry basically body as a rest or as at the equilibrium you can say okay body is in equilibrium correct word but if that body is subjected to the coplanar concurrent force system you should you will be dealing with only summation fx and fy okay so only these two equations of equilibrium are used in coplanar concurrent force system but if you are dealing with the coplanar non concurrent for non concurrent force system one more equation will come that is summation of all moments is also equal to zero okay so this is what you should know and we are talking it about the coplanar similarly if it is non coplanar fx fy fz equal to zero will come in concurrent and uh, in non concurrent mx my mz will come into the non concurrent just as just for your information if you should know that uh, what are the equations of equilibrium you can expect in non coplanar um for a system okay we will not be studying any problems on this but theoretically you should be knowing what equations of equilibrium will be there in non coplanar because co coplanar you know summation fx summation fy and summation of all the moments are zero which are in xy plane means about z axis okay so similarly in non coplanar not only x so um, y but also summation of all the forces in z direction you have to consider and the moments about the other axis also you have to consider and those should be also zero when we say uh, the body is in equilibrium in case of non coplanar coordinate system yes uh, uh, yes uh, pranjal you can write down uh, the equations of um, equilibrium summation of all the forces equal to zero summation of all the forces in y direction is also equal to zero summation of moments is zero yeah in case of concurrent force system you will deal with only these two equations but you will in case of non concurrent force system all three equations are used this is the difference okay this is not used in this is not useful for us in concurrent force system because in concurrent force system moment will not be generated clear okay mm, let me see if we have any other point um to discuss just a minute
Yeah, let's take a simple question. Um, try to solve this. The resultant of two equal forces. acting at a point is also equal to p okay very simple question determine the angle between the forces Very simple question. Yeah, in degrees, yes, you can. How 90 degree will come? No, just don't throw answers randomly. Try to think, um, yeah, we have some people saying 90, some 120, some 180. Some, some people are saying 30 degree. Any other answers? 60. <coughs> okay. Um, 240. No. Uh, Okay, 240. Um, let's see. Have you drawn the figures, all of you? At least to see. Um, yeah, 120 is the correct answer here. Um, at least you should draw the figure and see um, how it looks. Okay. Let's try to draw the figure randomly. If I draw one 90 degree, okay, suppose one force is P, another force is P. How their resultant will be? This will be their resultant, right? It is of course not equal to P. We know it is under root of P square plus P square. So it is root 2P, okay? If I say the resultant is root 2P, then 90 is the correct answer. So try to think uh, what, what will be the resultant. If you bring it closer and closer to this, what will happen? Your resultant will, will also, let's say, go on increasing, right? Because uh, it will create a parallelogram. Whenever you create an acute angle between the, sorry, whenever you create an acute angle between these two forces, your resultant will increase. Your resultant will reduce when the angle is more than 90 degree. So if it is 180 degree, resultant will be zero, right? So 180 is absolutely wrong answer because, mm, you can clearly see this you are pulling with this force here and you are pulling uh, the p with in the left hand direction so it will be zero so some something in between 90 to uh, 180 should be the correct answer okay so you know the law of parallelogram forces the resultant is denoted by under root of p square plus q square plus 2 pq cos of theta and here resultant is itself equal to p and both the forces are also equal to p so that is p square plus p square plus 2pp or 2p square cos of theta just solve this equation nothing else okay so if you uh, square both the sides and solve them you will get p square equal to p square plus p square plus 2p square cos theta so basically this p square p square you can cancel and uh, cos of theta is minus uh, 1 by 2 you will get and uh, 120 degree that's all or you can just try to draw the figure and you will see how it looks and then also you can judge right 120 should be the correct answer okay Okay.
Yeah. And now, uh, what is other possible answer? Yeah. Yeah. This this can be an also um, correct answer. You can say. Um, How much it will be? Here the resultant also you can draw. Okay. Um, how much will be the angle? Yeah, it will be 240. Okay. Yeah, so that is also correct. But make sure uh, what is mentioned in the problem um, and uh, accordingly choose the answer correctly. Okay. So if options are there both, then you can choose it. If one of them is there, then you can choose it accordingly. Anyone have any doubt in this? At least you understood the approach. Um, how to uh, solve it yeah draw the figure whenever you want to understand how uh, how this particular angle try to draw the figure and understand so look at this okay so this is x axis this is y axis and if it this angle is 240 you can expect still same same resultant in this case as well. Okay. Any anyone have any other doubt? Okay. What is cos of two forty? Minus one by two. What is cos of one by two, uh, or what is cos of one twenty? Again, minus one by two. Okay. So that is why both the answers are uh, correct. Um, Shurjana, is it clear? Yeah. Okay. Good. Let me give you another simple question. Mm. Yeah, we have point O here and we have phi U Newton force applied here. Then we have seven Newton force applied here. We have nine, new, um, nine Newton force applied here. We have 11 Newton force applied here. We have one Newton force applied here. And uh, we have three Newton force applied here. Okay, one, three, five, seven, nine, 11. Okay, they are passing through a center of a regular hexagon. And uh, as shown in this figure, determine the magnitude and direction of the resultant. Okay, so you have to find the magnitude and direction of the resultant. Okay. 
Yeah, if you know a simple basic logic, if we have some force fx in the x direction and some force fy, then the resultant of this force is under root of fx square plus fy square, right? So this is how we and we can calculate the resultant. If we know the forces in x direction and y direction, then the resultant will be under root of it. And what angle it will create is, yeah, of course, tan of fy by fx. Okay, this will give you the angle or uh, tan inverse of fy by fx. It will give you the angle at which this resultant is there with respect to the horizontal. Okay, so this same law you have to apply here, but now you you are not dealing with a single forces in x and y. You got multiple forces randomly distributed. So everyone, every force will have some x component, some y component. So you will have some for total number of forces in x direction and uh, y direction, their summation, and uh, then you have to deal with the resultant. Yes, 12 is the correct answer. So summation of all vertical forces is what? Which are all forces will create the vertical? This 3, 5, 11, and 9 these four forces will create a vertical component because this one and seven is completely in horizontal so it will not have any vertical component so summation of all forces in vertical direction is um, three yeah three sine of 60 because it is a regular hexagon so this angle has to be 60 this also has to 60, 60, 60. Okay. So 3 sine 60 plus 5 sine 60. Okay. These two forces will have vertical component in upward direction. Whereas the 11 Newton and 9, 9 Newton force will have vertical component in downward direction. And uh, so I should write it as a negative 9 sine of 60 minus 11 sine of 60. So if you solve them, you will get uh, maybe minus 10.39. Okay, negative indicates the resultant vert or the summation total vertical force is in downward direction. Okay, downward. Negative means downward. Uh, X axis, uh, no. Uh, 12 Newton is correct answer, but not on the x-axis. Check it again. Summation of horizontal is what? Yeah, now 1 Newton is on the left hand side, so I should consider the minus 1. Minus 3 cos of 60 plus 5 cos of 60. Okay plus 7 plus 9 cos of 60 minus 11 cos of 60 okay anything is missing no and if you solve them you will get 6 newton okay and the resultant will be under root of 10.39 square plus 6 square 12 okay and theta will be tan inverse of 10.39 by 6 to get a 60 degree so it's something like this mm like this something like this can you tell me why this direction check it if this answer is correct yeah. why because our summation f y vertical is downward and horizontal is rightward so resultant will be in that quadrant in the in this quadrant okay this is our go back and write 
the mission horizontal is how much? Six newton. The mission vertical is ten point three nine. Resultant is twelve. Are you following? Any doubt till this? Hello. <clears throat> I hope it is clear to you all. Let me check if you have any other question. Simple. Yeah. Okay, so the yeah the simple question is on coplanar concurrent force system where forces are passing through single point. One more question I'll take just to make you familiar with the how non current non concurrent force system will look like. Um, okay, um, anyway we will be solving many problems later on, but for today's session um, at least you should have brief idea of what we have studied till now we have let's say a bar or a beam you can say a beam a b then uh, c d and d okay We have three kilonewton force here. Two kilonewton. Four kilonewton. Then we have five kilonewton acting at let's say thirty degree angle. And uh, we have let's say Eight kilonewton acting at uh, forty-five degree angle. Okay, uh, distances are like um, zero point two. This is zero point four, zero point two, and zero point four meter. Okay, you are. Uh, yeah. From you, it is expected that you should find the resultant in here um, acting as it considering it as a rigid body. You have to find the resultant and uh, the location of the resultant also, uh, if possible, try to find where the resultant force uh, will come and at is at what angle it will come. Okay, the so resultant magnitude and direction. direction and location okay so this is the question try to find the magnitude direction and location of the resultant for this figure Anyone? Okay. Um, <clears throat> so 
how many horizontal forces will be here you can clearly see only these two forces will create an horizontal component because the rest of the forces are in vertical direction so summation of all horizontal forces if we do it will be minus 5 cos of 30 plus 8 cos of 45 right because um, if you split this force it will have two components like this that is 8 kilonewton force right and uh, you, and this should be also 45 and if you split this 5 kilonewton force it will look like this so that is the reason i consider this as a negative and this as a positive in case you find it's directly written this is the background behind it so yeah once you solve it you will get plus 1.326 plus means it is in rightward direction yeah 13.2 is the correct answer um, downward yeah let's see summation vertical vertical are lot of forces are there minus 3 plus 2 minus 4 okay because there are these are direct we can write them directly but these two forces the there will be vertical component so minus 5 sine of 30 minus 8 sine of 45 okay and uh, it will be minus 13.15 kilonewton minus indicates it is in downward direction okay and then resultant is under root of 1.326 whole square plus 13.15 whole square it will be 13.22 something kilonewton okay and the theta will be tan inverse of 13.15 that is fy by summation of all vertical forces divided by summation of all horizontal forces horizontal forces summation is 1.326 and uh, it will be something like 84.24 degrees okay uh, yes 84.23 so yeah can anyone tell me um, at what location this force so, yeah this force is something like this because it is clear that our horizontal is in this direction vertical is in this direction so resultant is something like this making an angle 84.24 degrees okay this is how resultant will be there but at look at what location it will be So here, you, at this point, we should know the Varignan's theorem. What is the Varignan's theorem? Write down heading, Varignan's theorem. What Varignan's theorem states that the moment of resultant about any point is equal to sum of the moment of all the forces about the same point. Okay. Are you following moment of the resultant above about a point is equal to sum of the moments of forces about the same point okay so let's take you are considering reference point as a okay so you are considering at point a let's take this let, let's take all the moments about point a and then solve the problem so what are the moments which are generated about a can anyone tell me minus 2 into 0 0.2 plus 4 into 0 0.6 then the horizontal component of 5 newton and 8 newton will not create any moment so only the vertical components will create so that will 5 newton 5 kilonewton will create a positive 8 kilonewton will also create a positive moment so 5 sine of 30 into 0 0.8 plus 
it sine of 45 into um, how much 1.2 okay this is the moment total moment from this all the uh, forces and this should be equal to the moment created by the resultant okay so resultant will again have vertical component and horizontal component horizontal component of the resultant of course will not create any moment so only the vertical component will create and what is the vertical component minus um, so it is downward that is 13.15 and we don't know let's say somewhere it is acting at a distance x from the point a so now if you solve the value solve this equation for the x you will end up with a certain number okay and that is 0 0.82 okay and uh, yeah so 0 0.8 is somewhere here so 0 0.82 will be somewhere here okay so somewhere here in this particular direction the resultant will be whose value is 13.22 at an angle of 84.24 and this is at a distance of let's say 0 0.82 meter okay we got some questions here um, let's try to answer them mm. Pranav uh, is asking minus or plus for the last two moments so I'm taking moments about point A so 2 kilo Newton will create a counterclockwise moment right it will create a counterclockwise moment 4 will create a clockwise moment here the resultant will be like this sorry mm. here the components will look like this right here also the components will look like this so it will it will basically create again the clockwise moments only i hope it is clear right now both mm, let me yeah both 5 newton and uh, 8 5 kilo newton and 8 kilo newton have downward vertical component and that is the reason it is creating a clockwise moment is it clear to everyone yeah so one new thing which we have studied is Wagner's theorem you should know if you have not written the definition i'll repeat again write down or the theorem statement the moment of the resultant about a point is equal to the sum of moments of all the forces about the same point okay this is very nice theorem very important okay yeah it's good that now connection is uh, better compared to what we have in the beginning so let's take advantage of it and uh, try to um, uh, cover some more topics okay some basics of free body diagram i will explain now free body diagram in this name we have free body what is the meaning of free body generally what happens is body is resting on some supports or um, attached to some threads or anything okay so you can say body is resting against various supports and if you remove all these supports and replace by their reactions or forces exerted on them on the body then such a body is called as a free body okay and diagram which um, shows this is called as a free body diagram okay i'll repeat the definition in more detail if you want if a body is resting against the various supports and suppose all the supports are removed and replaced by their reactions or forces exerted by them on the body then such body is known as free body okay 
so free body is now isolated body right because we are removing from the supports if two bodies are in contact one is supporting the other so if you are making it free means there is an isolated body from the surroundings and uh, a diagram of an isolated body which shows only the external forces exerted on the body is known as free body diagram okay so it is a sketch of the free body along with external forces acting on it let's take simple simple examples first and then we'll make it little little more complex let's take a very simple example if we have a, a ball of weight w resting on horizontal surface so how the free body diagram will look like the free body diagram of this block will be uh, or this ball will be ball you are removed the horizontal support here weight will act downward and r will be the reaction of the ground okay are you following yeah okay let's make it a little more um, complex okay this is the bar this is the ball now i'm keeping um, in this kind of uh, surface okay in this kind of surface which is at angle theta <coughs> to the horizontal and the block is again of weight w so how the free body diagram will look like you will remove this um, you will remove this uh, basically all supports yeah so the weight will act downwards here we will have um, perpendicular to this surface we have a reaction let's call this surface as surface a this surface as surface b so you'll have an rb here um, and uh, you will have an RA here, okay? RA basically here, but yeah, like this. Let me use the red pen to highlight RA. We have RB, and then weight is acting downward, okay? so if angle between these two is theta then angle between their perpendicular this should also be theta so this angle has to be theta clear any doubt in this free body diagram okay let's make a little bit more complex Suppose if we have a ball, same ball now, but now it is um, resting on a vertical surface, but because of this thread, okay, we are connecting it through a thread. Uh, and this ball is of weight W, and uh, which is also, let's say, touching the surface A. So surface, we should draw it like this. Yeah. So we have weight acting in downward direction. RA force will be like this. And uh, we have a tension, tension in the string. So we have weight W acting, we have RA, 
and we have um, we have tension in the string as well okay so this is how the free bar diagram will look like clear any doubt no doubt then one more example i'll take okay this is an inclined surface a block is kept on it and p is the force which we are applying okay um, and it is in at an angle theta so how the free body diagram will look like okay so this is the block weight of the block is Mm. weight of the block is w okay if this angle is theta this also has to be theta and we are applying by force p okay any doubt in this are you following and uh, we have one vertical reaction as well this reaction coming from this surface a let's call the surface a ra so we have weight of the block w p force and the reaction similarly let me uh, draw one more figure mm. let's say like this and we have one just a minute yep um, this is point A and point B um, how the free body diagram will look like anyone okay suppose this is a bar of weight w okay um bar of weight w so weight will be acting at a cg center of gravity w okay and uh, at point a we will have horizontal reaction ra and at point b we'll have a vertical reaction rb okay so here um, both yeah we have one horizontal reaction and one vertical reaction is it clear any doubt okay we got some comment here from web how sir friction force will be there okay i'm not saying that this surface is uh, rough or uh, anything okay so let's assume it has um, both surface okay without any i have not given any coefficient of friction here so don't consider um, friction in this cases in rod case also yeah if um, if let's say if we have a smooth surface again the friction will be zero the friction force will come yes only when we have a rough surface so let's take an um, uh, let's say suppose surface b is rough in that case what will happen is a uh, frictional force will also come because of the weight what it will happen is this rod will try to uh, go down like this and uh, this b will try to move in rightward direction so frictional force will be in leftward direction okay this is f, f friction you can say or frictional force f okay and uh, that will be equal to mu times the reaction 
me with the coefficient of friction we'll study about it in more detail when we study the friction topic but as of now uh, as we have not yet studied friction assume, uh, assume that these are smooth surfaces without any friction when i bring the topic of friction we'll study what is coefficient of friction and what is the maximum frictional force and all in detail any doubt till this is it clear to you all okay good mm, yeah uh one last point we'll study and then we'll end the session or let me check the timing yeah i think we are at the end now let's uh, end session here and uh, we will continue again on thursday okay if you have any doubt till this um, I, uh, we have two more minutes uh, we can one or two more minutes we can, i can wait and then we can end the session okay and um, uh, sorry for the um, disturbance here because of network issue um, in the next class um, i'll make sure that uh, we'll have a smooth connection okay any doubt can we close the session here if no doubts then we'll end our session here um, yeah thank you all for joining this class and let's meet again uh, on thursday thank you bye good night